this circular motion problem in physics really threw me for a loop. <laughs> That's such a bad joke. Okay, so if we look at this one here, we're going to be talking about centripetal acceleration and force. I know some people like to call it centripetal, but I prefer the word centripetal because it's going to tell us centri is center and pedal means seeking. So we're talking about a center seeking force. So I just want to remind you again, remember that acceleration is a change in velocity. So that means I can write it, for example, like this right here. We've been doing this before, but just to remind you. Now acceleration is a vector, and so is velocity. And this is really, really important. We're going to be playing with this idea because this right here, velocity, because it's a vector, it has two things, right? A vector has both direction and magnitude. Okay, so what? Why do we care about this? Well, that's because okay, we're used to changing the magnitude of the velocity. In other words, we're used to actually changing the, the length of that thing, the value of it. So for example, if I'm in my car and I press on the gas, what happens? My actual value of velocity gets bigger. And that makes sense to most people. That's why we accelerate. But it turns out if you keep the value the same, in other words, the magnitude the same, but you change the direction instead, that is also an acceleration. This is the key thing right here. So centripetal acceleration, instead of changing the linear speed, here we change the direction. That's going to be the important thing right here. So because of that, you know, that means we have an acceleration. So let's go into a little bit more detail. So let's consider an object that's going around in a circle. Let's assume it's going in this direction right here. Well, then what's going to happen? Well, if I look, for example, at just the linear speed right here, let's just say I draw a little vector here, that could be this, and this one here over here, I'm just going to try to make it the same length. I'm awesome at drawing, as you can tell. I'm doing my best, at least. So there we go, something like this right here. So the idea would be that the linear speed will be the same. That's the idea here, okay? It's going around. Now, if you imagine there's like a ball or something that's rolling, and you want to make it go into a circle, you, like you're, you're just kicking like a soccer ball or football, as they call it. Um, if it's going in a straight line, what would you do? Well, you would kick it, you know, let's say you kick it uh, to the left, and what happens? Then the ball would kind of go that way, and then you kick it again, you know, that way, and then you kick it that way. Basically, the way that you're kicking it each time is kind of telling you something about the force here, and forces and accelerations are related. But basically what's happening is this. Because you are changing the direction of the vector, not the value, not the magnitude, but because the vector is changing in direction. Look, it's up, now it's left, now it's down, now it's right. Because you're changing it, you are accelerating. And the acceleration, it turns out, will be center seeking. So we're going to say this A. I like to put a little subscript, subscript C to tell me centripetal. So that's why we have this right here, this AC, and it should be constant throughout this right here if it's a horizontal thing at least, it should be like this. So what are we going to define then? We're going to define the centripetal acceleration. Well, we have an equation for it. It goes A equals V squared over R. That's the generic equation. And just to define everything, centripetal acceleration is going to be A, and that's going to be in meters per second squared. Then we have the linear speed. That's going to be V. We are going to have that also in meters per second not meters per second squared, but meters per second. And r is going to be the radius. There's going to be some radius here that is going around. OK, so let's look at what the data booklet has to say with this. Well, first of all, they've got this first equation right here. So it just goes a equals, and it just says v squared over r. Now, they don't put the little subscript c, but that's OK. But it also. Now let's look at the next one here. Let's try to derive this equation. So I'm just going to say this. Remember, okay, remember something from another video that we did that V equals omega R. So that means then if instead of V, I replace it with omega R, that means I'm going to end up with, let's see, I'm going to have A equals, well, omega R, all that squared, because that's what V was, all that over R. Well, let's see, that gives me omega squared r squared over r. And notice then one of the uh, this r and this r here cancels out. So in other words, I end up with, do you notice? I end up with omega squared r. And that's the second version of this equation. So it's going to be omega squared times r. Isn't that nice? Now there's another version as well, and it goes like this. It's 4 pi squared r over t squared. 
and this is how it looks in your data booklet. Now this uh, last one right here, rather than uh, derive it uh, right now in front of you, I'm actually going to uh, show you that derivation basically as part of another question. But just so you know, at least this is what you get in the data booklet, so you don't have to memorize these, but it's important to know how to use them and how they're related. So I personally like to put a little C by this in here, like a little centripetal. You know, I like to do that. That tells me at least it's, you know, the, the circular acceleration. Now, for centripetal force, it's not officially in the data booklet, but it is super important, okay? especially when we're talking about orbits. So it's going to be important to start with this equation here for acceleration. So centripetal acceleration is V squared over R. But remember, remember that we have, of course, uh, Newton's second law. Remember uh, Newton's second law? It goes like this. I mean, there's two versions of it, aren't there? There's the version that goes F equals MA, like the net force equals mass times acceleration. I'm going to use that one. So that means, hey, in order to get the force, you just have to take M and multiply it by your acceleration. Well, I already have the acceleration. It's right here. Therefore, I could say this. I could say that FC, a little subscript C right here, well, that will be equal to just M times this V squared over R. So this right here is an equation that, like I said, is it's not exactly there. You don't necessarily have to memorize it, but make sure you can get to there. Okay, so this is not on the data booklet, but it's really important. I mean, if you if you just remember that the centripetal acceleration is just a v squared over r, then just throw an m in front of it because of Newton's second law. That's one way to think of it. So what do we have here? We have F is the centripetal force, that's in Newtons. We have M is the mass, V is the linear speed, and that's going to be in meters per second. And of course, we have R is the radius in meters. So let's look at an example. So we have the radius of the Earth, it's 6.4 times 10 to the 6 meters, and we're asking for what's the centripetal acceleration uh, due to the spinning Earth, because the Earth is rotating around its own axis, uh, experienced by someone on the equator. That just means that they're on the edge here, so it's nice. You know, when you're spinning around, so to speak, someone who's sitting at the edge here. Okay, great. So uh, what do we do here? Well, we need the equation for centripetal acceleration, and it helps to always write it down so you can show the examiner or your teacher you know what you're doing. All right, there we go. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually derive this last equation. Remember I said I was going to show you at the end uh, where the last equation came from? Let's just do it sort of for first principles. You could have, of course, cheated and gone right to it. I just want to show you how you get there. So first of all, uh, let's look at this and say, ah, but we don't know V. That's the important thing. See, if we knew V, if we knew the linear speed, uh, that would be easy. But we don't know V. So we have to work on V somehow. So remember that V equals, remember, it's a distance over time. Now, if it's a distance over time, what's the distance of going around in a circle? In a circle, the distance is 2 pi r, because it's the circumference. And the time is going to be the period. So to see how then we end up with V squared, then it's going to be this thing right here, squared. So that means I end up with a equals, and I'm going to have this mess squared. So it's going to be 2 pi r over t, all that squared, but don't forget, all that over r. All right, well, this thing divided by, uh, that's a little bit of a mess, so I'll put them both on the bottom here, but let's keep going. So I'm going to have a equals, let's see, I've got 2 squared, which is 4, times pi squared, which is just pi squared. Okay, I've got r squared here, that's great. And on the bottom, I have t squared, and I have just an r, just sitting there. So do I have anything here that cancels out? Uh, well, this r and this one here cancels out. So that means I end up with an equation that goes a equals 4 pi squared uh, over t squared, and don't forget that whole thing is times r. So this right here is going to be my equation that I'm going to work with. And lo and behold, we've actually derived the equation that was up there before. Look, 4 pi squared r over t squared. Look at the one from the data booklet, 4 pi squared r over t squared. Hooray! See, it works. So when you do your actual exams, just skip right away to this equation. You can save yourself these steps. I just want to show you where it came from. All right, so let's go ahead and find this. So the centripetal acceleration, I can put a little subscript C on it everywhere, just because. There we go. 
I like the little c, at least it tells me that. So it's going to be, let's see, 4 pi squared times the radius, which is 6.4 times 10 to the 6. Do I have to square that? Nope, I don't. Divide that by t. Uh-oh. I don't know t. So I need to know, what's the period? What is the period t? Well, how long does it take to go for the Earth to spin around its own axis? It's 24 hours. But hours can't go into this equation. This equation needs uh, seconds. So I need to do my good old you know, uh, conversion tricks here. So I'm going to do, uh, let's see, hours. I want to get hour on the bottom end so it cancels it out. And what do I know? I know that there's 60 minutes in one hour. Okay, that's good. And if I stopped right there, I would end up with my answer in, uh, let's see here, it would be in uh, minutes. But I don't want minutes. I want to keep going. So um, what do I do? I get rid of minutes. So I put the minutes on the bottom. So uh, what do I know? In one minute, there's 60 seconds. And that's going to work because that cancels out the minutes. And there I go. So I got 60 times 60 times 24. Well, 60 times 60, let's see, that's 36 with two zeros. So 3,600. Uh, but I need to know times 24. So 24 times 3,600 is going to be... 86400. Zero, zero. So that's the important piece here. So it's going to be 86400 zero, zero seconds. Okay, so that is going to go here. So I'm going to put that number right there. And remember, it's going to be, this is really easy to make this mistake, to just to get excited and put it there. Don't forget to square it. Look, it was supposed to be t squared. So that's why I replaced for t here. All right, so although it seems complicated, let me just get out my calculator and let's do this. Let's solve it. So I'm going to do a nice pretty fraction here. I'm going to say 4 times, let's see, pi, and don't forget to square that pi, times, and I have in brackets here, 6.4 times 10 to the, I like that little EE -E button, 10 to the 6. All that divided by, and let's see, it's going to be 86400 squared. I end up with 0 0.033846. Okay, and if I'm only allowed, uh, let's see here, I'm allowed two significant figures here, that's the least. So I'm going to say 0 0.03, and then this here has to round up to a 4 because of the 8 there. So this will be 0 0.034 units or meters per second squared. I'm done the question. So that's not a very big acceleration, which is fine. That's why we don't really feel much. We actually feel the 9.81 much more, of course. I thought it might be fun, though, to consider something else. What about the linear speed? In other words, how far, how fast are we actually traveling? Remember, the equation for linear speed is 2 pi r over t. So if I did that just for fun, now I don't actually need it, okay? I'm actually done the question. But in case I wanted to look at the linear speed, just to show you something kind of interesting, I do 2 times pi times, and what's the radius again? It's 6.4 times 10 to the 6. All that divided by this 8 six four zero zero if I do that on my calculator just to show you this so two times pi bear with me I promise there's something interesting here um, times six point four times ten to the six all that divided by eight six four zero zero this right here four sixty five for example Okay, it's going to be 465. That's meters per second. And if I wanted that in kilometers per hour, let's see, what would I do? I would do meters down here, so there'd be 1,000 meters in one kilometer. Okay, that's nice. And then I want um, hours. So I'm going to put seconds on the top. I know there's 60 seconds in one minute. I'm going to multiply that by, let's see, I want to get rid of my... Um, my minutes as well. So I know that there's um, 60 minutes in one hour. And what does that do? This is going to cancel out. My minutes and minutes cancel out. My seconds and my seconds cancel out. My meters and my meters cancel out. I end up with kilometers per hour, which is nice. That means so I'm going to take that number then and multiply it by, well, 60 times 60, which is 3,600, divide that by 1,000. So basically, uh, so that's going to end up being 3,600 over 1,000, which is 3.6. And I'm just going to do then 300, uh, 465 times that. So this number right here, it turns out times uh, 3.6. And again, just a reminder, that's because 60 times 60 is 3,600. I divide that by 1,000. It's 3.6. I end up with 1,675. Do you notice that? So it's around 
one six seven five kilometers per hour because now I have something really dumb here I have a dumb picture here so why do I put this right here because well <laughs> look at this I like this 10 kilometers per hour you know if you're spinning around oh, okay fine 100 kilometers an hour oh my god and then one six seven five kilometers an hour you're just eating and you're fine <laughs> I love it <laughs>